This episode is brought to you by Merrill. Join one of the most iconic names in wealth management. Merrill, you'll be part of a dynamic team of advisors and specialists working hard every day to grow their clients' wealth. And with the support of best-in-class research, advanced digital tools, and the resources of a global institution, it's truly an opportunity you can be bullish about. Learn more at careers.bankofamerica.com. Copyright 2024. Bank of America Corporation. This episode is brought to you by United Airlines. When you want to make the most of your vacation, book with United. They're an airline that cares about your travels as much as you do. United is transforming the flying experience with Bluetooth connectivity, screens, power at every seat, and bigger overhead bins to help fit everyone's bag. And with their app, you can skip the bag check line, get live updates, and more. Change the way you fly. Book your next trip today at united.com. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. I'm really excited about today's guest, Luca. He's the founder of Valiant Wellness, and he's a men's health coach and He's like I said, we talk about these four freedoms. One of them is emotional and health freedom. And so he's going to talk about transforming your body, mind, life, and helping others to do so. And I'm happy to welcome him to the show. Luca, welcome. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Tell people your story, how you got started, and we'll get right into it. Absolutely. So my background as a young child, I was always an athlete. I would, played sports, was very active. That ended up helping me get a collegiate scholarship where I did study finance. I went down the traditional route. And what ended up happening is what, unfortunately, I see a lot of happen to a lot of men my age. And then it just starts in their early to late 20s and then just goes on for the rest of their life. And that is when you finish university, whether you're a collegiate athlete or not, the poor habits kick in. You start working in corporate America or corporate Canada wherever, whatever you're a doctor, lawyer, and you gain the dad bod. You're not a dad yet, but you got a dad bod. Next thing you know, you're 28, 29, you're 30 pounds overweight, 40 pounds overweight. And a lot of guys accept that. And I was one of those guys where I was walking around at 215. My playing weight was like 185, 190. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at myself one day in the mirror. I said, this is it. 27 years old. This is it. This is the body. I'm not fat. I'm not in great shape. I'm just all right. That's what I want. Average. And I just set on my own personal journey. I said, no more excuses, no more diet plans, no more programs. It's not the problem of the diet plan. It's not the fact that I don't want to do an arm curl. That wasn't the issue. It was the problem that I didn't have the discipline. I didn't have the mindset. I didn't have a process laid out in front of me. How do I actually get in fantastic shape and have that as my new normal? And I transformed my own life. And then I just wanted to help others. Yeah. I love that. I love that you, how you have raw truth. You're just so truthful to yourself and just no nonsense and just say it as it is. And, but then you take action. So talk about, so a lot of people, they say, okay, I've got a good mindset. I don't have to worry about my body, but a lot of entrepreneurs I talk to, they say they focus on their body a lot because when they focus on their body, it helps them in all different aspects. So talk about transforming your body into all areas. 100%. They say health is wealth, right? And a lot of people say, okay, health is wealth. If you're not healthy, doesn't matter how much money you have. I take that phrase in a different way. Health is wealth, meaning if I'm healthy and I have more energy every single day, it's not just about having great muscles. Yeah, great. But it's also about having more energy, feeling better. Do you attack the morning every time you wake up or do you wake up at a bit? Oh, where are my two cups of coffee? I gotta look around. If yeah. you have more energy, whatever you do in life, you will be better. My first client ever was my brother. He's a corporate lawyer in Toronto. I said, you will win. You will win over the long run. Because when all your other colleagues are burning and crashing at 3, 4 p.m., they need coffees to stay awake. They're working to the bone. And eventually they need a vacation. You don't because your water's locked in. Your sleep is locked in. Your nutrition is locked in. You're working out. You're focusing on those things and right. you make more money. So it's all interconnected, right? I have way more energy. I don't burn out now like I used to because I've locked in on things that are important to me and it leads to me being more successful in every avenue of my life, not just financial too. I'm more yeah. present. If I'm on a date with a girl, I'm more energetic. I'm more present. I'm asking her more questions. If I'm helping my parents or mother with something, 
my father, my mother, my friends, I'm more present because I have more energy. Yeah, I love that. And it's just you're it's like you're working on a business or you're working on a relationship or a career. And same thing with your body. It's like you take the if if you're lazy with your body, then it kind of filters over into other areas. Yeah. Really. And then talking about just energy, if you're able at, if you're at peak fitness, you're able to, you're, you can remember more, retain more, you're more engaged, more present, just as you talked about really very important. The other question is talking about is, so this, you talk about this traditional, how do you people get the discipline? So they started, let's say they gained 15, 20 pounds. And then how do they get out of that? What type of discipline? Great question. First of all, we got to understand, we got to diagnose what happened because a lot of people, they build fitness programs and stuff, but they don't address what the issue is. Like I had a client who gained 20 pounds, right? And I asked him, how did you gain that weight? You you didn't just magically step on a scale and, oh, I'm 20 pounds heavier and you dissect it. Okay. I kept having beers after every game I had with my team. I have kept having chicken wings after every game. Every time football was on TV, I'd watch, I would order pizza and then I have beers. And next thing I know, da, 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 I'm 20 pounds overweight. Yeah. So a lot of people, we have to start with, okay, what does your life look like? You can give someone chicken and broccoli, tell them to do a bunch of cardio and run, but it, they're not going to have results or they're going to have results for a finite small period of time. And then they're going to fall off the wagon because it's like, Oh, I'm just doing this for two or three weeks because Luke is yelling at me. Okay, I got to do this. And now I, how do you live? How do you eat out with your friends often? Do you go clubbing? Do you go to the bars? What do you, what is your social aspect and your social life? Let's dissect that, right? And then see where are you adding those excess calories? Because at the end of the day, we as humans, we only gain weight one way, right? We eat in a caloric surplus. But a lot of people, what they do is, you, me, most people, when they're home alone, like I am right now, they usually make the right choice. Some people like, okay, I'm home alone. I got some chicken. I got some steak. Let me cook something. It's those situations when I'm out with my friends, I'm at the bar, the game's going on. Oh, let me have a little bit of this, a little bit of that. The social settings, right? One drink leads to seven drinks. Next thing you know, you've you drank 1500 calories in an evening without eating anything, right? So What I like to do with my clients first and foremost is I like to break down their life. Okay. What, let's see what you actually do. And then secondly, to build that discipline, we have to start with one question. Why, why do you want to get in better shape? What is that powerful? Why? Because if you don't have a powerful, why it doesn't matter if you have the best coach in the world, it doesn't matter anyone. It has to come from internal. There has to be a reason so powerful that when it's rainy in Vancouver and it's 5 a.m. and I say, you love it, baby, let's go. And I get up every morning because it's not just about the gym. It's about why I'm going there. Why am I building this discipline? So that's how I would start with most clients is find that Northern star that's going to guide you. Yeah. And then the other thing I see commonly is, so you're disciplined, you're regimented, you're, and then, so when is it okay to, let's say, have a drink or have a pizza or have a piece of chocolate. How do you incorporate those into your clients' routines? Dr. Christopher, I love that. You know why? Because I had this conversation with some clients yesterday. No one got fat having a slice of pizza or one burger. And you say, what do you mean by that? (laughs) It's not the one slice of pizza. It's not the 100 grams of chips. It's the whole bag of chips. It's the whole pizza, right? They say moderation is key, but it's about having the discipline to control yourself. And then there's Mm. little hacks around that, right? If you, pizza's my favorite food. So I love that you brought that up. (laughs) If I love pizza, I can, I have a huge appetite. I can eat a whole pizza, extra large, like this, 3000 calories stuff, blinking an eye. But do I put myself in that situation? No. So I don't order a pizza. I'll walk down the street. I'll find a pizza shop that only sells it by the slice. Okay. I'll have two slices. On average, a slice is about 350 calories. Give or take, right? So I know, okay, 700 calories, 700 calories. I'm okay with that. Now, if I have a whole pizza, I'm having 3000 calories. So it's a big difference, 2300 calories, right? But most people, when they're gluttonous and they go into these things, they just go for the whole bag of chips. I don't know anyone that goes and measures, oh, this is 100 grams of chips on a scale. And this is all I'm eating while I watch Netflix. No, they're like, oh, 
<laughs> All right, here we go. Let me just eat this entire bag. And next thing I've eaten a thousand calories of chips, right? Incorporate them all. Choose a day. For me, it's Sunday. Choose a day. Whether it's one cheat meal or two, it doesn't really matter. But more, are you actually, what are you doing on those days too? Are you laying on the couch all day? Are you getting 10,000 steps in, which is about 500 calories that you're burning? Are you doing that? All in moderation. Yeah. I love donuts too. I have a huge sweet tooth. I'm a man who can eat a full <laughs> cheesecake on his own. I can do all these things. I have. I've eaten 18 donuts because my friend dared me one time. I was like, yeah, uh, I'll tell you 18 donuts. But the point is that there's another great donut shop. I love my neighborhood. There's donut shops, pizza shops, ice cream shops. It's a <laughs> junkyard. It's a junkyard for the heaven over where I live, apparently. But yeah. it's about having the one donut, right? Am I satisfied with one? And that's where the discipline comes in, where I can walk into a donut shop, smell those beautiful donuts, and say to myself, I'm having one. Yeah. That's okay. And not have yeah, six. Yeah. Oh, ooh, willpower. Oh, I want to have three. You've thrown up. I said one. I'm having yeah. one. I buy one. I step out. And it's, I'm satisfied. Yeah, it's yeah. all of it's a, it's what you described. It's all about moderation. And another guy, another fitness guy I had on my podcast, he was saying you have to control what you put into your mouth. It's and it's that's just like how you feed your mind and how you feed it's like what you put into your mouth and which is you know, what you were describing, just moderation and the other well, go ahead. So, so, sorry to add on to that point. That's an um, amazing point. There's two type sides of your brain, right? You have your limbic side of your brain, everything's on autopilot and conscious side. A lot of people have what I like to call the eat on autopilot, right? <laughs> they don't even know what the hell they're eating. And if you don't believe me, watch a sports game or watch Netflix with a friend and put junk food in front of them. They don't know <laughs> what the hell they're eating. They're just out of this and they're yeah. boom, boom, boom. And they eat so many more calories. So you got to focus on what you're putting. How much am I eating? Let me actually focus on the food that I'm eating and let me slow down the rate that I eat at. Right. So, yeah, I love that. Then also then talk about this. Uh, the other thing is people, for example, they have this association with foods, like and it leads to food addiction and people eat to de-stress, like de-stress or kind of yeah. blow off theme. How do you disentangle all of that. And also like when, for example, let's say someone's been, has a food addiction and they get on the correct diet and then they relapse. How do you handle those setbacks for your clients? Great question. One of the things is you said it yourself there. So they're using this food as a coping mechanism, right? So what I like to do is identify the stressor first. Okay. What's making you all uh, stressed out. I got to, some people use alcohol, some people use drugs, cigarettes, and some people use food, right? Whatever their coping mechanism is. So First and foremost, how do we stop you from getting into that state? We address mm -hmm. what's getting you there. It's my boss. It's this. It's this situation. Every time this happens, this. Ha okay, great. So let's try and avoid that situation. How can we prepare for that situation so it doesn't blindside us when it happens? That would be the first thing. So identify the stressor. The second thing I would say is, okay, we're going to, I don't know, let's say someone says, I eat a tub of ice cream every time I'm angry. Okay. Why the tub of ice cream? Why the tub? Mm. Oh, it's convenient. I have it in my freezer. Aha. And I look, why the tub? Because I don't have to cook clean. It's just in my freezer. I take a spoon and I eat it. Aha. I said, okay, why not chicken breast? <laughs> oh, I have to cook it. I don't have to cook chill. There you go. So <laughs> is it really the ice cream that you're going for and the sugar? Yeah. But is it more because it's just convenient there or cookies or this? Because most junk food, right? You don't have to cook it. You don't have to prepare it. It's just blah. It's right there. Yeah. Is it just the convenience? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The convenience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I would try and make, try and get them to take that motor pattern out of their brain and say, okay, I'm angry, anger, stress leads to ice cream. How about anger, stress leads to a punching bag or anger and stress leads to a five mile run or anger and stress leads to hundred pushups because yeah. they always feel worse. They're angry and stressed. And then they eat those excess calories and they're like, oh my God, and they <laughs> double whammy themselves. I'm pissed mentally. And now my body's pissed how bad I just fed it. Right. So now it's like, I feel bad on both fronts. Yeah. So I would try and give them something else to do in that stressing moment. Let's find another coping mechanism. Hey, I'm a stressed out. I like to go for runs when I'm stressed. I like to lift weights. Let's clang and bang. Right. But yeah. find something else that would, that's going to throw that because at the end of the day, it's energy, right? Someone yeah. pisses them off. It's, oh, I got this energy in me. I feel this way. Okay. Then use that energy. Do something with it. You know, I find yeah. something funny, like sometimes, and it, I like to scrub floors sometimes. 
Like, I'm going to go scrub a floor because then when you have like a stain and you really have to scrub it hard to get something out, I find that very, for me personally, I find that very satisfying because it's like scrubbing floors, ironing shirts, cleaning. Anytime I'm like, oh, I'm just going to clean. I'm just clean my house spotless. The byproduct of me being stressed today is that my house is going to be spotless. Great. So do something productive with that energy that stressor gives you. Yeah, I love that. The movement and like I said, movement and flexibility, range of motion. And then talk about, uh, I'm just curious, what is a personal habit or routine that's been pivotal in maintaining your own fitness, either diet or mental wise, your physical yeah. fitness, all of that? Yeah, for me, it's been very simple. I journal every day. So I, I plan my days the night before. I know exactly what I'm going to do today. I know exactly what I'm going to do tomorrow. I, I practice a lot of gratitude. So for me, it's so much easier to work out because if anyone listening to this podcast has ever had an injury or can't work out, it's the worst thing in the world, right? You're laying, you injure your lower back. You're basically like a tortoise. I was joking with my friend the other day. It's like when you injure your lower back, you can't even get up. I practice a lot of gratitude in the evening. You know, like, hey, I'm awake. I get to work out. I'm healthy. We've all had that friend that you've taken to a workout and just pure negativity coming out of their mouth. It's, ah, this is so hard. I don't want to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you here? Why are you here? Why are you here to just to bitch and moan? Or are you here to get better as a guy? Yeah. So for me, gratitude has been really big. And then when it comes to diet, for me, food is so simple. People want to complicate food and diets and everything. I don't know whether it's the fitness industry doing that or supplement, company, whoever's pushing that. But yeah. eating healthy is the easiest thing in the world. I'm a religious person, maybe you aren't, but I like to follow the God diet. And I just look at what did God create? I eat it. If he didn't make it, I don't eat it. And I don't yeah. label foods, as bad foods, good foods, healthy, unhealthy. I just label foods with two things. Either they give me energy or they take away energy from me. And mm. I want to be energetic. I want to have a great day. I have a lot of things to get done. Yeah. Oh, great. I don't have any cookies, but if I had cookies in my house, I would stop. And before I put a cookie in my mouth, I would say, okay, what do I need to get done today? I'd have a conscious thought. What do I still have to do? Is eating this one cookie going to lead me to eating three cookies? If it is, I should probably not have it. I put the yeah. cookie down. And it's simple. The foods that are the most satiating, they fill you up the most. I have a big appetite, but I don't eat a lot of calories every day. I eat about 2,200, but I have a big appetite. So satiating foods are high in protein. Great. They're high in fiber, like fruits and vegetables. And I always have a challenge for all my guys that I coach and work with. They say, Luca, I got such a big appetite, man. I'm just starving. I say, listen, no problem. I got a challenge for you. I'll give you a thousand bucks if you could do this. Eat three Granny Smith apples and drink half a liter of water. Tell me how you feel. And after two apples, you're like, whoa, my God. I'm like, yeah, because the water and the fiber fill you up. But guess what? You only ate 200 calories. Yeah. Right? Or you can go to, I don't know, five guys, burgers and fries, just a random example. Cause their calorie, their burgers, like a thousand calories. And I eat that thing. And it's nothing happened. I just look around. I'm like, where'd my burger go? Oh, it's in my stomach. Oh, it's like, it's <laughs> made for me to not be full. Right. So eating healthy is just very simple and just, it's the mindset of it. How do I want to feel right? People don't mm -hmm. ask themselves these questions. Like when you're having an ice cream pizza, you're going to have a bag of Doritos. Great. Yeah, it tastes great. But before you open it up, before you eat anything, do you ever ask yourself, how am I going to feel after this? And usually we know how we feel. We eat like crap. We feel like crap. It's not really like some magical science, right? And people never ask themselves that. How am I actually going to feel? And a lot of the times you realize, you know what? It's not worth it because this the satisfaction of that sugar or that salt on your taste buds for whatever 30 seconds or a minute that you're chewing that, that will come and that will go. But your lethargicness, you're feeling bloated, feeling like you're in a food coma, that lasts for a lot of hours, five, six, seven hours, right? So then for me, anytime I've had those episodes where I've eaten way too much and I felt terrible, I would just look back and reflect on that day and say, wow. I had that full pizza and it was great for 20 minutes. It took me 15 minutes to eat a full pizza. And then I felt like a bag of crap for seven hours. So yeah. then I'll just ask myself, is 15 minutes worth seven hours of feeling like crap? I don't think anyone would say yes. Yeah. 
most people don't think about food that way. They just say pizza, delicious, eat, eat more, and then reflect. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. How can people contact you, follow you, reach out to you, and check out your social media, etc.? Hundred percent. My Instagram is Luka Petkovic ninety five. So that's L U K A P E T K O V I C nine five at the end. I'm always posting mind stuff, mindset stuff on there. I just posted something today, so every day I'm posting something about nutrition or mindset or uh, exercising, some good little routines. But the thing I'm really big on too is that I understand that with my brother and a lot of my clients or working professionals. They don't want to be bodybuilders. They're not going to be huge guys, but they have pain in their back or their hip flexor or their shoulders because we sit like this all day. I have a lot of content on there and more coming out of just correcting your posture, feeling good. So you can move, so you can play sports, so you can have an active life, right? So, yeah. 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 And for all the audience out there, let's thank Luca for coming onto the show and all of his resources will be in the links and show notes. And with that, thanks so much for coming onto the podcast. Thank you so much. Have a great day.